Roy Hessen put it this way, my goal is God himself, not joy, nor peace, nor even blessing, but himself, my God. And that's what prayer does. Prayer, prayer, prayer brings us right into his presence where there is fullness of joy. So why do we pray? Before we pray over these requests today, why do we pray? Does anybody know why we pray? I can tell you, I pray because I'm desperate. You see, when there's money in the bank, when our health is good, when things are going well in business, when our grandkids and our kids are doing well, when people are liking us, you know what we should do? Pray even more. Because it's going to end pretty soon. And not that it would end always, but there's going to be a hiccup in one of those areas somewhere. So why do we pray? Where well, prayer one, it is an act of worship that brings God's children into communion with the Holy Father for the sake of union. We have union not because we have a common enemy, but because we have a common God. That's why. So, so why pray? Well, this prayer it, 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 it is vital, is, is worship. Why pray? Well, it brings our heart in line with the heart of God. Why pray? Because it helps us practice his presence. Why pray? It also helps us to discover his will for our lives. I hear so many people say, I'm trying to find the will of God for my life. So they are running around and looking for the will. It's over there. Behind the guitar. Behind the plant. And then they go, oh, behind the pulpit. But the will of God is this, Micah 6, 8. He has shown me, O oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of me? To do justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with my God. God's will is that we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And what happens, Matthew 6, 33 comes into play. Jesus said this, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. I don't know about you, but I want God to add all things to my life, not just some things. He is the God of more than enough. Pray for those in authority, the Bible says. So we need to be praying for our president, the cabinet, the Senate, judges, local government, so that God will give them the wisdom to know what to do. Whether we agree with them or not, we agree with God because he's our president anyway, isn't he? Yeah. President Jesus, boy, I tell you. Dum, dum, da, dum, dum, da, dum, da, dum, da, dum, da, dum. That's the presidential theme here on earth. But, but God's theme, I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> See? He's our president. He knows better. He, the Bible says he holds the hearts of kings in his hands. So we pray that God would give them wisdom. It's an act of worship that we pay homage to our great God and Savior. Thus, our hearts are inclined to surrender all. Why pray? It is a command of Scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Without ceasing in the Greek means uninterrupted. How many of you get interrupted a lot? Don't we get interrupted? Especially when you start having your quiet time. As soon as you start having your, your quiet time, if you have any kids, something breaks or, or somebody throws a sibling out of a window or something happens. Prayer should be like the air we breathe. Our life depends on it. God requires that we have Jesus on our mind every moment of the day. And I honestly don't. How can you do that? Because there's so many distractions. But how does that happen? It happens through prayer. Dr. Ronald Hayes or Haynes said this. He said, my purpose in life is to please God, to be used for his purposes. The only way I know to do this is to place myself under the authority and power of Jesus Christ. Christians have the privilege to prayer. Anytime we can come to God, we can pray while we're driving. If you drive a car, you better pray. OK. While working, we can pray. In the shower, we can pray. 
we have some closet singers in the, in the shower in this church, don't we? Some of you probably sing in the shower. You say, no, Don, I don't do that because they throw me out. <laughs> while exercising, I pray while exercising that God will get me through it and give me strength. While playing with our children, while shopping at the supermarket, we can pray. As we move through our day, we should breathe prayers. This is, this is a spontaneous way to constantly be in contact with our Redeemer, breathing prayers. These prayers should be short, simple requests, spoken in one breath, asking God to help us deal with the problems and the things that come our way. Our purpose in life is to please God, to be used for his purposes. That's why we pray. The only way we can do this is to place ourselves under his authority. And the last couple of scriptures I'm going to give you. James 5.16 says this. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The affected, fervent prayers of a righteous man avails little, much. Somebody reads that Bible here. It avails much. Avails much. So effective means effectual. It means fervent. It means it means to be mighty, to shoot forth, to be effective in. Avails means to have uh, force, power, to prevail, to be of strength. Prayer works. Some people say that prayer changes things, and it does. But God is the force that is at work. He's the force at work. So as we go over these prayer requests, please know that God not only hears our prayers, but he wants to respond. People struggle with prayer, though, because they don't know what to say. I go to, the, I go to my Heavenly Father, and the first word I get out is Lord, and I get stuck on Lord. Because you don't know what to say. I heard one sister say this in Christ. She said, I don't talk to God very much because he's too busy taking care of things around the world. He doesn't have time to take care of my problems. There's a lot of ignorance when it comes to prayer. We have a Heavenly Father who really wants to hear from us. I want to hear from my daughter. Does she drive me nuts at times? Yeah. She's supposed to. She's eight years old. Do any of our kids drive us nuts? Yeah. Adults drive us nuts more so than kids. Sometimes we rather have kids than adults around. But the one thing that our children look at us when they, when they speak and ask, they ask with excitement and wonder because they know that mom and dad is going to respond positively even if they say no, not right now. So that's why we come to God in prayer. Why is that? Because he is the force at work.